Hello and welcome. This is Handmade Originals. <laughs> Hello and welcome back or welcome to Handmade Originals. In my previous video, which I hoped you've watched, um, I showed you how to make a, an irrigation system for your garden out of a bit of old hose and a water butt. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate it. What you will need to automate it is a watering timer, which is something like this. This is just an example. I'm not promoting it. There are a gazillion of these on the market. But the one thing that I think they all have in common is that they are built to connect to a garden tap rather than a water butt. So first of all, I'm going to show you how this connects to a garden tap, and then I'm going to show you how you can adapt it so that it does work with a water butt. Right, so let's do the easy one first. Garden tap, thread underneath, which is what most garden taps have. Some of them come with a separate fitting. You can just unscrew that, and then you'll get to the thread underneath. Right, with this, let's dismantle it. You can see how it fits together. This is a collar, which literally, that comes off. That, the whole point of that is just to hold this piece in place. And what you, it's suggested that you do is you loosen that off and then you screw that in or screw that to attach it to the, uh, it's quite difficult to get the thread to line up. So you're supposed to just be able to, you can just screw that on like that, but I find that quite tricky. So what I do is just take the whole thing off like that. There's a loose piece in here. Don't lose it. So make sure you put that down carefully somewhere. And then hopefully this is going to be easier. Keeping the collar in position. Don't take that off. Otherwise you can't connect it to the timer. Then you can get underneath it and you can make sure you... There we are. It's much easier to screw on. Now that had a rubber washer inside it. So you need to screw that quite tightly to make sure that you get the brass tap indent slightly into the rubber washer and then you should get a nice watertight fitting. Right, now then this collar screws onto that, it's much easier. And again, tighten it quite nicely. And now this, a lot of them are very similar to this one so I'm just going to show you this one quickly but obviously you'll, you may get the same or you may get a different one it's got batteries in here which is how this one runs I don't really like mixing electricity mains electricity with water so and I'm just going to test it so I'll turn the tap on hopefully this is turned to off so this won't come through which means we've got a nice watertight ta -da! seal all the way through and then if I turn this on <laughs> I'm going to get soap so I'm gonna if it works properly it should just come out because I've turned it on um that's the batteries <laughs> okay so stop 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 the batteries closing it so effectively what you've got here is a tap and another tap um, so, and the battery noise that you heard is the tap opening and closing. So this is now on off. So this tap is open and stays open. And this one is opens and closes according to the timing that you set. So let's put that one back on. And now let's go at the, have a look at the slightly more tricky how to attach it to a water butt. Just forgot to say, um, of course, <laughs> What the last thing you have to do is to connect the hose itself or your uh, irrigation system and that just clicks in like that and then the whole thing is set up ready to go. Let's take that off there. Now I'm going to turn that off for the moment because I'm not setting up the irrigation on this tap and let's go and look at the slightly more tricky one only because it hasn't got this screw thread we have to put an, another connector in between the two. Right, here we are back at the water butt. <laughs> um, now, to connect it here, here we've got the uh, water timer which has the thread system. And here we've got, obviously, just a water butt tap which it's a male connector and clearly 
that won't connect to that. So what we need is something like this. This is um, a hose lock connector which goes from male to female. Um, so it will connect in the hose lock clicking system way to here. Pull this down, clicks in, and then this will screw on. That's now the same. Um, that's now the same threaded connection as on the bottom of the tap, so this will connect on there. I think the easiest way to go about this is, and we can do it however you like, but the easiest way I found is simply to connect in like that. Now, now when I, full disclosure, when I first connected this up just to test it, um, it actually leaked really badly. Um, so I thought it was something to do with water pressure coming from this going that way and from the water butt going that way but that didn't really make sense because it worked on that tap so why didn't it work on this tap and I then thought well actually it's not to do with this the timer it's to do with this connector and I saw online when I checked that with this particular connector which is I think 2170 but I'll put a link to it below um, quite a few people had problems with leaks now I don't went through everything and short of putting chewing gum inside it which was my last resort um, I didn't actually do that I thought what I'll do is I'll just change um, all of the uh, change the o-ring here because this even though this is a new tap um, I thought just in case it's a difference in size in the o-rings and it turns out we just put this on this is just a click and push if I turn that's already switched on so if I turn it on now You'll see water coming out here, not coming out here. So even though the O-rings appeared to be the same uh, size, in fact they weren't. And when I put them close together, I could see that the one that was on the tap was a bit thinner and a fraction of a millimeter smaller in diameter than the ones that I got from hose lock. So change that over. And the way I got it off very easily was to put a cup of hot water under it to soak this one. Uh, the one that's on the tap already, got that off and then did the same thing, put the new uh, rubber washer, o-ring, whatever they call it, into warm water so it becomes more malleable and is able to have a bit more give and then got that on there and as you can see it just works perfectly, no drips. Right and here I can now connect up my irrigation system and there we have it. That's how you set up your automated irrigation system. Try it yourself. Mine still has a slight drip here, which I will work on. Um, and if I can work out how to get rid of the drip, I will come back to you in my next video. And we've managed to finish it in spite of the rain. <laughs> I'll see you next time.